Hello, this is Deborah Anderson, the Black Woman Animator. Come back to you with another video. And in this video, I have Shayun Samson. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. That's a good way of pronouncing my name, actually. You got it right. That's cool. You know, I, you know I've been looking it up and stuff, trying to be culturally <laughs> <laughs> competent. <laughs> so, can you introduce yourself right quick? Cool. So, uh, my name is Shogun Samson. I am a Nigerian um, character designer, concept artist. 3D artist, uh, I work in the animation industry, been in the industry for like 10 years now. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much like my baseline, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So um, how was it growing up and what's your origin story? Sweet. Um, I mean, it was fun growing up, honestly. I feel like I forgot most of it though, but the parts I remember was I've always been creative, right? And my family has been creative in a way. My elder brother used to be like an artist. He's still an artist, but he doesn't do, do as much as I do now. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I grew up in Lagos. And I, as you know, like Lagos is always buzzing. There's so much happening in Lagos. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, my childhood was growing up on like animations like Spider-Man, you know, Wonder Cats mm -hmm. and cartoons like that actually inspired my creativity, you know, growing up. I know I used to draw my own comic very early, but I didn't even know they were comic at the time because I started drawing my own storyboards before I knew what comics were, yeah. you know? But yeah, like, I think early childhood was watching a lot of cartoons. Then my secondary school period, that was when I started drawing more. You know, Naruto was a very big thing for me. So I used to draw manga. Who would imagine? I used to draw manga a lot. Yeah, when I started. Um, but for manga, I went into comics proper. Um, Hawk used to be my best comic. so. Hawk and Pete by Dale Kyun was like my main thing. I thought I was going to be like one of the best comic artists because I went into comics seriously. Yeah. Uh, so I switched again into like video games concept art. So I did that for a bit, then switched back to character design. So I went from like very stylized to comic, hardcore comic, went into like concept art creatures and stuff, then went back to cartoon stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's always been like that, you know, great influence with music. Music was a big part. I used to do a lot of singing growing up. I still do now. Mm. So yeah, it's been like a very creative, fun yeah. childhood. Yeah. <laughs> so of what you remember, what are some of your best childhood memories? <laughs> childhood memories. I think one of my best childhood memories, of course, is just like not thinking about anything for sure. That's everybody's childhood <laughs> best memories. But I think I always do a lot of cosplay. But we didn't know it was cosplay, right? We just always like take blankets and like towels and tie it on like capes and stuff. I think that was fun. And I remember specifically, we used to create like our own guns with, there's this tree called Popor. Do you know Popor? Mm -mm. It's a fruit, right? Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a fruit, right? And the branch has this, it's very hollow and very soft. Mm -hmm. So we used to like use sticks to make it like a gun. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking that was fun, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like, that was something we used to do a lot. And I still remember it now. I think that's one of my <laughs> childhood, you know, no worries, Priya. Yeah. The good old days. Oh, man. I wish I could go back. <laughs> so can you yeah. talk uh, more about your culture and, your, and the uniqueness of where you're from? Oh, yeah. I think everybody's catching on now to the culture, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, I think the unique thing about being Nigerian is just the hustle, man. Like. It's, it's default. Everybody's used to like hustle and like push hard, you know, like, and like building to have everything. We went up, like the culture is built to really make you push yourself to get it all, right? Yeah. You know, in the Western world, now that I'm here in Canada, it's different because everybody's used to like the credit system. So things are a lot more relaxed. But yeah. back home, push hard for every single thing, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that's the beauty of the culture and just growing up in music. I didn't know how interesting it was till now. You know, like music is like everywhere in church, in parties, like, and mm -hmm. people are like, people are trained to be original, you know, yeah. like great sounds and stuff. I remember I used to make my own guitar. Nice. Back in the days, I used to I make it with a lot of like braid rubber. This rubber that used to make braids. Yeah. But I used to make my own guitars with that. So like. Mm -hmm. You know, like being very creative is part of the culture. It's just, it's inbuilt. That's one thing I think I really enjoy, the creativity. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds uh, awesome. 
There's so much, man. <laughs> um, what What are your favorite, you know, customs and traditions from your culture? Customs and traditions, or favorite. or from your family. Ah, oh, man. I think it's just family. Now I sound like I walk in, I walk on the path of furious, but it's just family. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like being, being brought up in a way that you know your roots, right? Like you know your family, you're mm -hmm. around your family and just respecting that no matter how far you go, how big you get. I think yeah. that's one thing about culture, like just the family mindset. Really. Yeah. yeah. Um. Do you have any funny stories that your family tells about you that you like to share? <laughs> I think I used to be like a vigilante. One time, I used to be, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, because there was this movie growing up. It's like, a, they were kind of like, how would I put it now? Neighborhood guards. But mm -hmm. they had like charms and they have this bandana they always wear. So I, I, I used to think I was part of that. So my mom she jokes about that now. That I used to think I was like the leader and stuff. So I go around with the kids from the neighborhood and just <laughs> what is no I don't know where does it wrong. But yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing I think I still laugh about now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so many though. Yeah. So um you were originally going to study medicine. Like how did that change? Yeah, yeah I used to again, like so many, so many different. I feel like I've lived so many lifetimes. I used to think I would be a doctor, mm -hmm. but I don't like sight of blood. Like I don't know how. <laughs> I, I don't even know how, but again, I feel like it's just part of what, like being Nigerian, right? Like being a doctor, engineer, um, what else? Doctor and engineer is like the main thing. So you always have to be, unless you're not successful. That's how it was for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have to fall into one like that, right? So <laughs> I thought I was going to be a doctor, but nah, that, that's not, I don't see that happening anyway. At one time, I actually thought I would be like an astronaut. I Man, I was just thinking a lot of stuff. <laughs> I was just dreaming wild. Yeah. You're just being a kid. I guess. I guess. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, were your um, parents supportive of your artistic interests? Now, yes. Before, no. <laughs> I mean, like, I had really bad experience, man. I had really, really tough experience because my dad was really tough for me. Yo. But it's not like it is supportive, but it's hard to like see anybody doing what I do now. Mm. Even now, it's still hard. You know, like they didn't see it, man. They didn't see it because it's weird. I was a science student, and right at the end of school, I decided to be an art. Like it didn't make any sense. They just told me to be someone that's so confused, <laughs> you know. But now they understand that they they believed. Um, I, I feel like they trusted my judgment, but they were not just sure. You know, and they have to like protect me and try to like put me in the right direction. But I know for sure my mom supported me because I remember times when I'm drawing in the night and she would like buy me candles. Like I remember very well. She'd be like, You keep drawing in the night, like, why are you draw? Okay, just use candles. Like use candles, because I would always like use the lantern and heat. So she had to buy me candles and when it's like half out, you know, I'm done with the candles and buying. Yeah, she supported that way. But it was little. <laughs> yeah. But now it's different. It's different now. Yeah, it's always that evolution. And once you once you become more successful, it's, it's like you can't see like, what 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 other people aren't doing. That's why that this platform exists because now others can see and then their yeah, parents can see. So good because so I wish I saw a lot of stuff like this earlier. That would have really helped me, you know, because mm -hmm. to look up to. Yeah. 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 So um, some projects that you've worked on. Uh, you know, Monster High, Electrify, Jungle Beat, the movie, Seal Team, Owaju. Are there any other um products that you worked on? Oh, man, so many. I've done a lot of freelance stuff that I can't even remember. I mm -hmm. was going to me the other day, and I'm like, yo, I can't even put everything I've done. There's no way. I have to like pick things I think be easy. But um, I know I've done a lot of commercial stuff for studios mm -hmm. in the UK and the US. Um, what other stuff is not there? I did some stuff on a game project. Hopefully the game will be released. I'm just waiting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like major feature films, those are the ones I think. Um yeah. quite and mm -hmm. some new ones will come out soon, you know, ND and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um what would you say you love about animation? Everything, man. I feel like animation is like everything. Music, you know, design. Um mm -hmm. you could push in culture there. Mm -hmm. you know, 
and personalities, right? So for me, what actually drew me to focus more on character design is just like building personalities, right? And I feel like animation is just literally just watching that play out, yeah. you know? So everything about animation, you know? And now that animation is gearing towards the more artistic feel, yo, I'm, I'm too happy. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you've done a lot of like, you know, 2D character design, visual development. How did you bring 3D into the mix? I had to, man. I had to. Mm -hmm. Honest, honest, honest uh, answer. I had to because I realized um, 2D jobs, because I love working in 3D animation first up. If I love working in 2D, I'll be perfect. But I wanted to work in 3D. I always like working okay. in 3D because my paintings always try to mimic 3D, right? Mm -hmm. So I realized like in production, 2D is like the first five, six months out of like three years or four years of production, yeah. right? I, I, it made no sense to like get cut off, you know? So I wanted to like go further. So I picked up 3D and I loved it actually. I love ZBrush. That was like the, mm -hmm. I did ZBrush for a while without even doing 2D. So 3D for me is just, it made sense for me because I was working in 3D and after I do the concept, I find sometimes it's harder to get people to translate that 2D to 3D. And the director has to come in, approve the 2D, then approve the 3D, then approve the looks. So I was like, man, I could fix this problem. I could be that guy yeah. that could transition easily. And again, I get to work longer in production, right? So right. That's the main reason. <laughs> Multi-talented. That's yep. job security. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. So um, I saw an interview, like a written interview you had with Artella. Did you get any good? I remember joining that site and then never doing anything. <laughs> did you get any good opportunities from Artella or? Did. Yeah, I did actually. There was a project we pitched and it went silent. Then I think two years after the project got selected or something, I don't know. So I, get to, I got to work on it again and I was paid properly. So nice. that, was, <laughs> that was the only thing. And I got to meet some people too, but I mm -hmm. didn't talk anymore yeah i tell i was i wish you walked out though yeah like now they're just a flop i just went to their site and they're just a file management site but i remember being really excited like oh i can work on stuff but I, I just never followed through and like signed up for anybody's project yeah, we need something like that again because it kind of like broke the barrier of working with different people right like you could work with like some great directors just like that mm. yeah forgotten about tell i just remember now <laughs> yeah um so what has been your career path from Nigeria to where you are now? Because you were well, you were in the UK for a little bit too, right? Oh, no. I was in Nigeria. Oh, you just worked remotely? Everybody, yeah, I was working remotely. Everybody thought okay. I was in you. I wish. <laughs> but I was in Nigeria. Um, my transition, uh, I think I've been in Nigeria. I've been working in Nigeria all my life, really. Till last year, I just moved here to Canada. Um, the transition really has been smooth because it's the same thing. I don't think yeah. there's there's no difference. Mm -hmm. Workwise, mm -hmm. it's just like culture changing places, of course. But workwise, it's the same. Mm -hmm. and, and I think now I'm trying to understand what it is working full time and getting into the yeah. full time. It's different, man. <laughs> it's different. I'm so used. What, to what is the what is the huge differences for you? I think it's just first off, pricing is different for some reason that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> It's different. I mean, it's cheaper to work full time than freelance. I, yeah. I don't get it. Um, what else? I mean, the good part of it is you get to work with people more. You're more infused into the projects. You know, you know more about the pipeline, and that's one thing I wanted for a long time. Uh, what else? Yeah, just commitment, right? You know, like yeah. seeing a project go through the whole stage. Because as a freelancer, you deliver your stuff, you're out. It yeah. gets picked up. It's published, you don't get, you've got your money, you're out, you know, but in this you're committed, you know, yeah, you're more attached, I think. Yeah. So what is the big, like, shocks from Nigeria to Canada? Everything, man. <laughs> Everything. I think for me, what I would say, what I miss the most, of course, is the food, the fashion. And if you ask me, I would say, nah, I won't miss these things, but I miss them a lot. Mm -hmm. I miss a lot. I'm tired of eating bread. Yeah, man, I'm tired. <laughs> Everything is bread, man. <laughs> if brother wants to lose weight, help a brother. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like 
Um, what else? I think your credit thing mm-hmm. is great. It's like a big, I, I don't think I'll get used to it to like maybe when I live the same time I've lived in Nigeria. So like 28 years or something again, then yeah. my brain. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's like the major changes. Yeah. The major changes. And things are a lot more laid back here. You mm-hmm. could actually create and like explore. You know, I've gone to like the Comic Con, comic stores are all around. If I had grown up here, man, I don't know. I don't know how different my life would have been though. I loved the fact that I grew up in Nigeria, but I feel like the exposure to things would be crazy. I feel like I'd have been a comic artist like maybe when I was like six or something. <laughs> yeah, it's everything's here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. How did you get the opportunity to do the Domestica course? I actually bought it, so I support. Oh, I, haven't it. I, haven't you- it. I haven't finished it yet, but I bought it. <laughs> That's the good thing about Domestica, right? Like, take your time. Do it at your own yeah. pace. No rush, no pressure. Just pick it up. I have courses that I haven't even opened. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. How did Domestica happen? No idea. I don't know. But one thing I, I know for sure is, like, because I'm Christian, right? And mm-hmm. everything is connected in a way. If right. you really logically try to, like, track it, something somewhere has clicked, something but yeah, I was just on my computer one day working. I just got an email. Hi, hi, hi. I'm like the producer from Domestica. I would like to be on a course. I was like, meh, one of those emails. I just left it alone. Because I remember, I think even Skillshare reached out before they even became like what they were. But I just ignored it. I didn't even care. Mm-hmm. I just left it alone. I, I think I ignored it for like two days. Then the third day, I was like, man, let me even read through this thing. What's this? So I checked. I was like, Domestica, I have courses on Domestica. But I was worried because... At the time, there were no English courses. They were all like Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. yeah, what's going on? So I replied. And interestingly, it was like a real thing. You know, they wanted to like bring in, you know, Africans to like, you know, branch out, you know, do more things for our people and see creators from our perspective, you know. And it was a great opportunity. It was, it was beautiful. It's like one of the highlights of that year. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely got a bunch of one where I'm gonna have to read the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Same, same. I have I have like three or four that I haven't even watched. Yeah. But they're great. Like domestic is great. Yeah, it was an experience, man. So what would you say is your biggest breakthrough in your career? Or have you had multiple? Biggest breakthrough? Man, I feel like I'm still breaking through. <laughs> uh, but like biggest breakthrough, I think now. Now I know what I bring to the table. It's easier to identify those breakthroughs now, right? Um, but I think one of the biggest opportunities I've had, Domestica is one of them because it means a lot to me. We, we've not had anybody like myself do anything like that before. So it was great to like do that on that platform. Um, I worked on some projects earlier last year. That was great. Iwaju is a good one. Yeah. Disney, like that's a big one, right? Yeah, and I think just looking back at my own career, like so many breakthroughs actually, because most of the best or biggest projects that have come out from Africa have always been like the very first people to work on it. You know, I never saw it as anything, but now when I look back, I'm like, yo, that's like a great thing, you know, like there's no project that's been out of Africa that I've not been part of, you know. So I feel like there's so many breakthroughs, I can't pick one, yeah. <laughs> there's so many. We have to dedicate a segment to the gift, mm-hmm. the talent, the oil, the voice. <laughs> like, how long have you been singing? When did you start singing? Like, how is that? You know, you've been before. Yeah, man, singing is so. <sighs> I'm Christian, right? And mm-hmm. everybody has a calling. It's just fact. I feel like even to every religion, everybody has a calling. Everybody has a reason why they're here. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for sure. And I struggled with this for a really long time. I think I'm still struggling with it a bit. Mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like music is part of my, it is my calling. It's what my gift is. Mm-hmm. But I love art too. So I've been trying to like balance that, right? Yeah. I've been, honestly, I'm trying so much not to invest too much in music because it might take me away from art. I've been struggling with that. Yeah. But music has always been there. Music has always been there, even before I started drawing. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember I've been writing songs from when I can remember stuff. Like I've been composing songs. And I still do that today, you know, so yeah, it's been there. It's just been there. It's just been there. 
So you get to collaborate with, you know, friends and like what, like what is tribe music? Can you talk about that? Oh, tribe. Oh man, that was a great experience. Still a great one. Uh, so it's a church. Tribe is actually a church. It's a community of, I would say it's a community of people that just had a lot of questions, you know, about Christianity, about religion, just about who they are. And a big plus to it, it's a group of creatives, like everybody. Just imagine myself, duplicates of myself in the church. <laughs> you know, it's like a creative bunch. So um, Tribe Music was a team of just worship leaders, you know, songwriters, um, artists, um, poetry writers, you know, poems was something that's very huge, you know, in the team. But yeah, Tribe Music was a team I actually had to lead for like, I led for two to three years, mm -hmm. you know, but I also started from like just being part of it, you know, being in the back and all that. But yeah, Tribe Music is a great worship team. It's a worship team of just creatives. That's the best way I could put it. Yeah. 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 Definitely on YouTube, it's easier to find a, a, a video of you singing than anything about animation. <laughs> Yeah, exactly like so, yo it's been so hard man it's been really hard i had to at some point i had to create two instagram accounts mm -hmm. now the music world is like almost dead nothing is happening there <laughs> you know but i'm still struggling hopefully god's gonna help me find that balance yeah, yeah. so what opportunities has singing given you because i have seen the multiple ver various spaces you are in in the right. youtube space so like right i think opportunities music has given me I feel like everything, man. Music is music is like my life. I always say like music is like my weapon. Really, honestly, that's what it is. You know, and because of the kind of music I do. Mm -hmm. um, music is just, I think, what's the best way to put it? Opportunities. I'm trying to find the word to use, but music has just been my piece. You know, like when I'm, I mean, you know the industry, right? The animation industry can be toxic sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and when I get into the spaces, I run to music, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when I'm about to get into the spaces or when I'm out, whatever, music is always where, I, you know, it's like my safe space. Yeah. And I think that's one thing. That's why I have not gone deep into it. I feel like when I go deep, it's not going to be my safe space anymore. It's going to, you know, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the preparation and the outlet. <laughs> exactly, man. That's exactly what it is. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. So, like, who did you listen to growing up? Growing up, I know Don Williams was a big one. Um, the mom was a big one. Mm -hmm. Where else did I listen to? Oh yeah, Hill Song. Mm -hmm. Hill Song was like Hill Song is still one of like my you know mm -hmm. I think on Spotify for sure is the songs I play the most. Hill Song, I would say, yeah, because at that time I understand more about life and like writing songs and you know words made more sense. Yeah, so Hill Song, I would say Hill Song. What have you learned throughout your life and career that will be beneficial advice to others? Man, I always tell my friends now, like, what will be will be. You know, like, you don't pressure yourself. Because <laughs> I still I still tell myself that. Mm -hmm. Don't overthink anything. Don't just trust your guts, you know, and just believe in yourself. And again, like, push through. It's a lot of stuff, but I'll put it all in one. Be determined. Um, be determined in yourself because mm -hmm. at the end it's just about you right like believe in yourself and when you do that every other thing will fall into place you know the right opportunities will come everything will make sense because my own career it, i had so many years it didn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> trust me it didn't make any sense and it's just interesting like now i'm seeing tri trigger fish is like everywhere right now right mm -hmm. and i started with trigger fish i can't even say how much was the first job i started with you know and it's crazy to see how things have changed yeah you know so it's just determine and just believe in yourself really just believe in yourself mm -hmm. no matter how big you get no matter how little you're starting just believe in yourself i think that would be my main thing yeah did you ever have like a a journey in the comfort of sharing your stuff or were you always like comfortable like putting your stuff out there oh man <laughs> you notice i haven't posted anything recently <laughs> Because now I don't have time. But I think the journey of posting, um, I would say first off, just post, man. You don't even know what will get you the opportunity you're looking for. I keep telling people, the, it feels like the things I didn't even try to do are the things that open those doors. 
-hmm. And I always ask people this question, like, why did you reach out to me? What exactly did you see? And when they say what they say, I'm like, what? I, I can't remember why I did that thing. The thing I did, and I'm thinking, yo, this would be like, what would make the opportunity? Nothing is going to happen. So, man, just post. Mm -hmm. You know, just share your stuff. It, it makes all the difference. It's a... Uh, our industry is pretty much about like, what can you do? Yeah. What can you do? What have you done? You know, so you have to show something. If you're not showing anything, I don't know. I, I don't know how you're going to get the opportunity to work. Right. I mean, that's how I know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, do you identify as introvert or extrovert? Or ambivert? I'm a mix of both. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mix of both sometimes. Um, I'm to myself because I'm trying more now. And that's the downside of working remotely. More reasons to stay in the house. <laughs> more reasons to stay in the house. Like there's some days I don't even walk to my door the whole day. You know, but I think I'm a mix of both. Yeah. And that's the beauty yeah. about music. Music makes me look like, oh, I'm an extrovert, but trust me, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a mix of both. I fully identify as an introvert and then I'm like, society makes me have to be extroverted. Right, right. I don't identify as both. I'm like, I'm an introvert and I play extrovert on TV. <laughs> yeah, I, I always, I, I switch. I switch. If I'm around people, I'm out there, you know, I'm doing yeah. stuff. I always like having people around. But again, I like my space. <laughs> yeah, I like my sanity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do people misunderstand the most about you? Yo. Misunderstand. I I don't think I've been in a situation where I actually think people misunderstand who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm always very clear about you know what I stand for, who I am. Mm -hmm. But one thing I think is, well, it's just the old Nigerian stigma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But now it's changing. Now we have music, you know, breaking doors, so everybody knows. I think it's just the old Nigerian thing. Aside from that, personally, I don't think there's anything. People. So what is the old Nigerian stigma? Oh man, there's so much. You can tell me you don't know. <laughs> there's so much. I think first off is just we can't be trustworthy. Mm. Um, we are too arrogant. Um, what else? We all is just I met someone recently and she just told me, you guys can be sneaky. I don't know what does that even mean? <laughs> and I think it just boils down to like we all just determined, right? If we want something. We go for it. We find yeah. every means to get it done. You know, so it could be misunderstood. Yeah, yeah like y'all are like, I, I feel like if you switch arrogant to like very sure of you yourselves, like, yeah, yeah. very confident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's that's how I'm going to actually explain what arrogance is. It's like it's just confidence and steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you're just, you don't care about anybody else. You're just doing your thing. If don't yeah. nobody else believe in themselves, a Nigerian will believe in themselves. First, we do. And it's just, it's default. Everybody, naturally. Like the whole society just views me that way. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Uh, what is one thing you failed at and how did you overcome it? One thing I failed at and how did I overcome it? Yo, these questions, man. <laughs> one thing I failed at, I think... Hmm. I won't say I failed that, but I was really worried about was my art style. Yeah. Okay. I think at some point, like in my career, this is like maybe three or four years ago, I was really worried, you know, and, and it's something that comes with the old drought of this industry when nothing is happening. It just goes silent and you'll be like, yo, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I still exist. Like I'm still doing stuff, you know, and that's start creeping in and you start thinking like, yo, mm -hmm. am I doing something wrong? Why am I not getting job offers or what's going on? Why are people not replying? You know, I think that happened, but how did I overcome it? I just, honestly, I just realized that there's nobody else like me. Mm -hmm. There really is nobody else like me. Nobody can process the way I'll process. So there's something about my art. Then I started identifying that and I just believed it, right? I still have issues sometimes like, ah, oh, my style, do I even have a style? Do I stand out? But it's funny because when I talk to a lot of clients, they'll be like, yo, we want your style. I'm like, wait, what exactly is this style? You guys are saying like, I don't know what you're saying. But again, it falls back to just believing in yourself, right? Yeah. I lost that belief at some point, but I just found it back again. And yeah. Yeah. It still happens. 
Like I have a, you know, I have multiple Instagram accounts and like one is just, just to follow art that inspires me. And so I definitely mm-hmm. follow you like, cause oh, your, sure, your style inspires me. What is the style? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It is there though. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything people will be surprised to know about you? I like playing soccer, even if I play like maybe once in like five years, but I like it. I know I really like it, but I don't like watching soccer. Oh, yeah. That's how I, I do basketball. Know. Oh, really? You like playing, but you don't watch? Like, I like watching basketball, but like the NBA has become very offensive instead of like the two sides of the court. And so it's mm. not fun. And then when I was in middle school, the WNBA came out and I was like, like watching the games. And I'm like, this just right. makes me want to go outside and play on the hoop. <laughs> Right, uh, exactly. That even sitting to work, right? Same, man. I, I, don't, I think I'll sleep off. A lot of guys don't understand that, but it is what it is. Yeah. But I like soccer. Um, I realize now that I love collecting art books. I have so many art books that I haven't even opened. And I still want to buy more. <laughs> I have this friend, every time we go out, she'll be like, you know you're not buying that one, right? You, you know you're not, and I'm going to buy it. I don't know. I just, yeah, I like collecting art books. I think when I eventually settle down, I would have like, yeah, that's something I'll do. I have like a library of art books where people can just come and read my books and just, yeah. you can take them, just come read, you know, enjoy them. Yeah. Cause I, I don't read them. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, I, I was just about to mention that there's like this concept where buying books and reading them are two different hobbies. <laughs> two different. I, I don't, I would say I love reading books because <laughs> I read maybe like one in like five years. <laughs> oh man. But I love collecting books. I love just having yeah. them. Yeah, I just like I just like it. I've come to accept it. What is the best advice like a mentor or coworker ever gave you about the industry? About man, I feel like I have and that's one gift I think I've just always had. I've had people that have been great to me. I don't know what it is about me, but I've always had people that have been great. So one thing I won't say there's one thing. It's just in different seasons, right? Right now I think the one thing I hear a lot is no regrets, no regrets. You've made a decision, move, just don't, don't start dragging yourself back. Cause that's when depression comes in. Yeah. When you start, when you start dwelling on, oh, I wish I did this. Yeah. You're just sinking to depression. Right. Yeah. So like, just keep going. Even if it's a wrong decision, I know, yo, I screwed that one up, but just keep going. Just keep going. It's always going to get better. Yeah. I think that's what I have right now that I hold on to. Because I'm making so many decisions in my life right now that I'm like, yo, what did I just do? <laughs> you know? But again, just keep going. Just keep yeah. going. Yeah. And and I would just stop that up with like all these ask questions, man. Yeah. All these ask questions and just be honest about it. Right. You know, like if you don't understand something, just ask. <laughs> if just ask. Yeah. You know, you could always go back to the fact that, yo, I asked, <laughs> even if you screw it up, well, I asked, you know, but always ask questions, you know? Yeah. I feel like not asking questions can just lead to so many things like people, cause people are like afraid of looking dumb, but if, particularly if you're at the beginning of your like job, Career. like you're supposed to be asking questions, exactly. so even if you're deep into it, the people who ask questions actually make it further and like quicker. That's the whole point, because you're literally just getting answers with someone that solved the same problem you're trying to solve, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's Through having, like, art mentors, there's, like, three hours I could spend on Google or YouTube trying to find an answer, but I could ask my mentor, they're like, oh, boom, boom. And it's like, wow, thank you. <laughs> Yo, like, I still say to today, like, mentors are the best thing any artist can have, starting out. Like, just have people you can ask questions. Yeah. It's, it's going to save you everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And the and the, the trick I've seen, even no matter what the industry, even if you're afraid to ask questions in your job, just ask mm-hmm. somebody else the question and then you still look smart and you still have the answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just ask questions, man. Just ask. You know, like in Christianity, right? I don't know. Like, I always say Christianity because I'm a Christian, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much it's a relationship, right? Just ask questions. Yeah. And you get answers. That's how it works. You know, that's the whole point of prayer, right? Just yeah. Question. So ask whoever is like your senior or your lead or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just ask questions, I think. Speaking of like relationship, that's the key to like the networking piece too, because people yep. try to make it so transactional. Mm. And it's like, it's building a relationship with somebody. 
and then you just so happen to ask them for something later but that's exactly. so transactional yeah yeah that yo man that's something i actually should talk about because when i started out i used to reach out to a lot of people i did not know how beneficial it was till now yeah it's so many people that I've had conversations with, like when I didn't even know what I was doing. And I'd be like, yo, these people actually replied to me because my work was shit. <laughs> my work was horrible. <laughs> you know, like I've always, again, I've always asked questions. I've always asked questions. Mm -hmm. If I tell you people I've sent DMs, like eight or nine years ago, you'd be like, what? What were you even thinking? You know, but yeah, like always just reaching out to people, genuinely just connecting with people, not because you want to get jobs or whatever from them, you know, yeah. just actually, you know, connect with people. And eventually if it's going to lead to something, it will. And if it's yeah. not, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. If you could change one thing about the industry, what would it be? Yeah. It should just be less toxic, man. Yeah. Like it's too hard. Mm -hmm. I think now that I'm here in Canada, I feel like I'm now into the industry proper. Yeah. Freelance is chilled, man. You, you don't know what's going on. You're just me. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're inside it, it's different. You start knowing what's really, it's, yeah, like, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know if it can change. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But it's just, it's just been less toxic, man. You know, people getting fired, beat up. It's a lot. Like, it really hits me when I hear about layoffs and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, man, like. It, 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 that's why you start seeing artists that don't even are not artists anymore. They're just like workers. Yeah. You know, and that's something I've started seeing now. Not everybody thinks like an artist anymore. They're just like, yo, man, I just want to get a job done. Yeah. You know, so, and with the way the industry is now, we just produce more people like that. Yeah. And artists are like reducing every single time. You know, because I, I keep yeah. telling people, I keep telling people, like, I don't know. I feel like at some point I'm just going to switch and just do music. Mm hmm. Because art sometimes gets stressful, gets yeah. really stressful, like job hunting, disappointments that come. Like, I know it happens in all the industries, but as artists, we are more attached to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's one thing I wish. Yeah, it's unfortunate, like, uh, depending on, like, leadership of, particularly in a capitalistic society of the people mm -hmm. with the money not having artistic eyes sometimes. And yeah, you, okay. you have to, like cater to their things instead of like each artist being hired for their um their um talent and then let yeah. them take it to wherever they take yeah, it yeah exactly yeah it's, it gets to a point where it's just about executing stuff i understand that like money needs to be made but at the end like what's the core of this industry it's like entertainment right people mm -hmm. feeling emotions to what you're creating if you yeah. start if you forget that then you start creating things that don't even have life anymore yeah just something which to worry. is the antithesis of animation is to bring yeah, life. <laughs> yeah like, it's like a different imagination and just making them forget about whatever they're going through yeah you know yeah yeah it's it's a lot like even now i keep saying it like now that i'm i would say i'm a lot more successful as an artist i kind of don't enjoy drawing more i don't understand why that happens like yeah. i feel like you get more busy and most of your juice goes into production yeah. and you don't even enjoy drawing anymore. You know, like you don't have time to like just sketch and just have fun. I went into one place where I draw to make money. Like, I don't know how to explain the feeling. It's weird. Like back in the days, I just draw because I want to draw. I just want to draw, create stuff and that's it. But now I draw from the mindset of, oh, can I think, make this a content? Can I pitch this? Uh, yeah, yeah, the hustle. The hustle just comes in, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, um, the music piece of animation, like, because, man, the, the music from the 90s animation. Yeah, it was different. <laughs> different. Was different. They didn't care about, like, catering to a particular kind of people. They were just doing things naturally, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different. I don't know. Yeah. It is I still love the industry, though. It's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I love the potential of it, and then more people doing independent stuff. So I'm just hoping the independent part of the of the industry keeps growing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I just I just hope for a good balance, you know, of course. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is the importance of incorporating your culture into projects when given the opportunity? I 
feel like that's the whole essence, man. It falls back to what we're saying, like your passion, what drives you. Like I know at some point in my life, I was stuck up and drawing like cowboys and stuff, but I don't really know much about cowboys, if I'm being honest. <laughs> you know, and I had a lot more things that were natural around me yeah. that were fun, but I didn't see them to be fun, you know, till gradually I started going to find those things. I'm like, yo, this is what makes me unique. This is what yeah. makes my design my design. You know, mm-hmm. this is a story I can tell that nobody can tell from my perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, like even now, one of the best artwork I know, I always get like comments and like questions from is this grand lady I did, this old lady I did with the ring. And that thing was just so natural to me. Like, I didn't think now I have to actually create stories to it. Yeah. I don't have any story to it. I just drew it. But now I have to create stories to it. <laughs> you yeah. know, but like it's, I feel like now it makes more sense because everybody now accepts it. Then it was, it didn't make any sense. If, if I was drawing a lot more black people, nobody, nobody cared. I don't think I would have gotten jobs if I'm being honest, because they wanted this to fit into like a, you know, it's not like this is not even a race thing. It's just what the industry was. You yeah. know, I can't, I, you know, if I was saying, okay, I'm learning now to like do, let's say, surfacing, for instance, and I can't surface like a Caucasian character, and then I can do it, you know, you have to like learn both ways. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like now I think it's it's more important than ever to like bring the originality. You know, because you want to create things you're proud of, right? And not just, mm-hmm. again, create things like a robot. You want to create things that has you in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, th- and then when you were talking about your culture earlier, the <laughs> originality is natural. It's not, it's just there. It's just, <laughs> like, that's one thing I really want to do more now. Like, just things I see around me. I, you know why it makes more sense? Now that I'm here. A lot of things that were like, oh, this is so cool. Are the things that are just here. They're just normal things here. Like in comics, I remember reading Spawn a lot yeah. when I was younger. I used to love the way they draw the alleys. I'm like, yo, this is so cool. This is so great. But that's what it's just, it's just normal alleys here. <laughs> it's, it's like almost nothing here. It's like a neighborhood. But it's like amazing and interesting to me because I don't know what it is. Right. <laughs> that's the same way people here are going to feel if I start drawing things from where I'm from. Because that way they start experiencing, you know, what I experienced. So, whatever. Yeah, that's it's like a great a, way to put it. Yeah. Because <laughs> we'll be like, it's just an alley. <laughs> exactly. Because, yeah, I, I don't think anybody will be like, oh, God, this alley is so beautiful. No, nah, they see it all the time. It's just right beside their house. But for me, I'm like, yo, look at the bricks in those buildings. Like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> That's like when I read like the BuzzFeed articles about like Americans and, and everybody be like, oh, the red cups, like, it's just a cup. <laughs> you see, like, so again, and that's one thing, I, I guess because the, the production houses and stuff were here, yeah. it made more sense. Yeah. Most of the things that were created are, you know, created from here. So now I'm happy, you know, a lot of stuff's are coming in. Like, I'm, I'm so pumped for a Waiju and Kizazi yeah. Like, that would change everything. Yes. You know. Yeah. Excitement. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm so happy. Like this is the year we've been waiting for. Yes. Three, Finally. I've been, yo, I've been waiting for it, man. Like when it <laughs> when it be announced, and it be like three years from now. <sighs> yeah. Yo, it's crazy. The Iwaju story is insane, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> what do you hope for the future of animation as far as innovation, storylines, and characters? What do I hope for? Uh, yeah, again, I just hope for like that that crust where it's normal to see like black owned productions, um, you know, more other like I, I just I hope for that that mix where nothing is like, oh, is this people's time or whatever. It's just perfect, it's just what it is. It's yeah. just different stories. If you want to watch stories from Africa, there's a place to see it. If you want to watch stories from India, it's out there. It's not like you now have to search or some people are feeling like, oh, our stories have not been told or whatever. I just wish we get to that point where it's just what it is. You know? Yeah. Kind of what, like what music is now in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you what do you think of like the the boom of the African music? African? Oh yeah, yeah it's time. It's time. <laughs> you guys are welcome to enjoy what we've been enjoying for a long time. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm I'm happy it's happening now. Yeah. I'm I'm happy it's happening now and like I'm alive to experience it, you know, mm-hmm. like 
I'm really happy. Like when I walk around and I just hear it, I just smile like, yo. That's like, I remember when I saw the Black Panther, the new one, mm -hmm. and Bonaboy's song came up. I was, I was just tapping my friend like, yo, because she's Dominican Republic. I was like, yo, listen to that. That's, that's Bonaboy. <laughs> like, that's my like, she's like, oh, it sounds good. I'm like, yeah, of course it sounds good. You know, so I'm just happy. It's like, it's out there now. And I just hope more and more till it becomes normal. What do you hope that, you know, black animation professionals or hobbyists do in this current landscape, particularly in Nigeria, that you wish you could have done or that you are doing? What I wish we could I think, if I'm being honest, is just now aiming for professionalism, mm -hmm. right? Because the light is on Africa now, doesn't mean you rock PPA yourself. Like, we don't want to industry where they are like, oh, okay, it's a Nigerian animation. Okay, mm, they try. No, nah, man, let's let's yeah. push. And that's one thing I've always wanted to do, and that's one thing I'm still doing. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Right. I I don't want to be like a local champion and be like, oh, you want to do something? Meet that guy. Nah, everybody should be as good as I am. Like, yeah. aim for that. Point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, sometimes I feel really sad when I see the news that come from my country, Nigeria. I'm gonna bash some people now. It is what it is. <laughs> It's like a tough love conversation, right? Yeah. I think it's time we really try to like match the standard, you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. create something good. Don't just create something that's not, that's just like, oh, okay, nah, nah, man, push. If you need to learn, learn. If you need to get like mentors, get mentors. Yeah. If you need help, get help, <laughs> you know? And that's one thing I was honestly just talking to my friends this morning that the industry back home needs to understand that it's not a competition, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you need to like work with other studios and like learn from them, do it. Don't have to do everything yourself. Yeah. You know? So that's one thing I think people need to understand, you know, like be professional, be good. Mm -hmm. You know, let don't let the first thing people say was like, oh, it's an African thing. Nah. Yeah. This is good. Then it'll be like, oh, it's from Africa. Wow, nice. No wonder the colors are like this. But let it be good. You know, yeah. that's yeah. that's my thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think another thing is like, you know, training your artistic eye because when people have artistic eye and you're like a beginner, you don't like your stuff because you know it could be better and you know what professional is or you know what good is. Yeah. But then some people don't have the artistic eye and they just yeah. like, this is good. Yeah. I'm like, it's not, it's not. <laughs> That's my worry right now because I feel like the floodgates for content is open and people are just going to bring shit. Mm. <laughs> you know? bring good stuff yeah create good stuff like push hard you know yeah, yeah. that's just me yeah. take that's full my advantage idea. of the opportunity exactly and learn you know man i i don't think i can ever stop learning man because there's always something new there's always a better way to do it and again like the industry has been doing it way before we even started yeah you know but there's so much to learn you know yeah that's that's one thing i would say like just progress and the thing about like the people, if you just, you know, the floodgates open and you're mm -hmm. just doing stuff that's subpar, it's because sometimes people are like, let me just get the money now. And they're not forward thinking to how it could sustain the money. Exactly. And actually create like a legacy people can aim for, you know, like, yeah, I just, that's, that's my only worry. Like create good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. If you need to take your old studio, like I'm talking to the studios back home now, if you need to get like a training for all the staff in your do it. Even Disney still has training in the studios every single time. You know, like that's my worry, you know, yeah. just learn, don't stop learning, do good stuff. Yeah. Now this, I could have like five hours conversation about it. <laughs> yes. I'm very passionate because that's where I'm from, right? That's where right, I'm right, from. right. Um, what are three movies you recommend to my audience and why? Oh man, three movies. Ah, <sighs> yo, this is hard. Wait, let me think of something I watch. I know that hit me hard. Mm -hmm. uh, yo, I need to really take a minute to think about this one. Oh my God. Spider-Verse for sure. Cause I mean, that's like a, yeah. Okay. I remember now Spider-Verse, I came and it's a Pixar movie. I'm trying to which one. I think it was turning red. This is gonna sound weird, but turning red for me was. Oh yeah, so this is why turning red is turning red for me. Okay. 
Tony Red is an Asian story. Like the baseline is, it was based in Toronto, blah, blah, blah. But the core of the culture is not American. Right. But you see what I'm saying? It's done properly. Yeah. Maybe because it's not that exact, blah, blah, blah. But the creators are not Americans. They, it's their culture they're bringing in. Like, so that's the thing, like, that's, that's one of the movies I would say for me, and this is for me, I just see, I just hope to see like a Nigerian story being told on that level. Yeah. Quality. Yeah. I think if I could be in one project like that, I'm done. I'm done with my career. I'm done. You know, <laughs> but yeah, so, Sun in Red, mm-hmm. Akane is insane. Akane is just too good. And um, yeah, Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. What you're saying about Turning Red, like Turning Red, there's a, show, a movie called Always Be My Maybe. And then mm. um, Beef, that was just on Netflix. Oh, it's oh, like, I was going to say Beef, but I was like, mm, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, well, because like, it's like the story is there and the culture doesn't bust you in the face, but it's there. Like, yeah, it's not, really, <laughs> it's not forced. I think that's yeah. the word. It's yeah. not forced. You just believe it and accept it and you love the culture. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm just really hoping we create like one project like that. Yeah. In Africa that's going to be so real and authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause, Cause also it always be my maybe the reason I like, cause, cause, okay. So I had a period where, you know, women typically like, you know, sometimes in America, they'd be like, oh, during Christmas, let's watch all the like, you know, Lifetime and Hallmark movies. So, right. so a few years ago, I gave it a chance after five movies, I'm out. Like, this is the same story over and over again. Like, I don't yeah. understand how y'all are doing this. Like, you know, the girl leaves, she become uh, popping, come back to the small town boy, like, or any variation of that. The reason I like Always Be My Maybe, because it's the exact same story, but they just did it better. <laughs> like, like, so you can do the exact same story, just do it better. I keep saying it like there really is no new story. If I'm yeah. Honest. If you look at the arc of everything, it's the same thing. <laughs> but it's just the perspective and how it's been told, mm-hmm. and the cultures, and you know, the kind of lifestyle. I think is what makes the difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But I, that's one thing I'm hoping for, man. I'm just really hoping. Yeah, it is something like that. Yeah. And then another thing about always being my maybe, like it was the Asian culture, but it was also San Francisco. So it's like you could tell. I wouldn't know because I'm not from San Francisco. I you wouldn't see know them. all the Easter eggs. But yep. the people were like, oh, snap, I remember that, I remember that. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I, yeah. I don't know. So everybody can enjoy it, but it's still for it and a particular audience. Yep. And they would identify it easily, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, if you could choose an actor to play you in a biopic, who would you pick? <laughs> Why are you doing this, man? This question is you. Uh, an actor to play me. I kind of feel like, an actor to play me. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> uh, you are honestly, somebody. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I'm just trying to find who has like a personality that well, who can act. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I kind of feel like this John Wick guy. <laughs> it's like me because he knows his, he just wants to know what do I have to do. Yeah. Get it done. Yeah. I'm gonna die crying, but I'll get it done. I think, I think, I think he might play me. Honestly, <laughs> I have to use him because everybody knows who he is, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I, think, I think he can fit me. And he says, he says, literally, it doesn't say too much. Right. <laughs> if someone was producing a documentary about you, what things would they, what, would you want them to highlight outside of your work in animation? I think pretty much just how I think as a person, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm very, like, now that I'm getting older, I realize I'm very spontaneous every single thing about my life is like mm-hmm. i just decided yeah we'll do it <laughs> that's it you know <laughs> that's how i move and i think it's something i would like to be enlightened more that it's not a bad thing yeah again it goes back to no regrets man you know because mm-hmm. at the end decisions will be made yes or no you have to pick one you can't die <laughs> you have to pick one <laughs> yeah you know pick one and move you know um yeah i think that's one thing just like my life like who i am Mm-hmm. Uh, away from like creative hustle, you know, yeah. passion and all those things, just who I am as a person, core. Yeah. I think that's one thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just read a really good article in the past week. I don't know what article it was, so I don't know if I can mm-hmm. like give it to people, but it was this it was describing the difference between imp- like um spontaneity and impulsion. Mm-hmm. And so spontaneity is like you're more um structured with it, but impulsiveness is like the dangerous one. Yeah. But you can <laughs> just, but you can't yeah, be spot spontaneous and it's still be good. Oh yeah, yeah, like I I kind of feel like being spontaneous is like making that decision on the fly, but then dedicating your time and focusing on it is what makes a difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. So where can people follow you and your work? Instagram is the best place. Even if I've been posting stuff in a long time, I wish to get back. I'm really trying to get back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm trying to get back to posting, but Instagram, yeah. Shego Shego underscore something. It's the best place to follow me, really. I think that's the only one that I'm very active on. You know, Facebook is like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, Instagram for sure. Yeah. And I want to thank you for allowing me to highlight you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for doing this for the industry. And thanks for doing this for people because you wouldn't know how much you're doing now till mm-hmm. later. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had I had early days of my life where videos like this was what actually prepared me for the next five years. I didn't even know. Yeah. So that's what you're doing for people now. So thank you for having me on board. Thanks. Cool. And to everyone out there, I want you to like so I know it's real. Comment tell me how you feel. Subscribe to Citadel and sign up for post notifications to show your zeal. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.